I've previously argued that abstraction equals pragmatism. That to abstract, when you're programming, actually is to be pragmatic. Uh, to get an in-depth argument, I'll link the videos where I talk about that specifically below, so be sure to check that out. But the short version is that there always seems to be two sides to this argument, where people argue that on one hand, there's the notion of premature abstraction, essentially arguing that to increase the abstraction of your system before you actually know why you need the abstraction means that it's likely that you'll end up in a situation where you didn't actually need the abstraction at all because you misunderstood the need for the abstraction. Or there's the saying, you will never know as little as you know right now. You're, you're anticipating change that will never actually come. Which is why people argue that it's premature and that you should wait until you have the need for that change and then abstract so that you can get that change into the system. Consider the saying. Uh, I think it's Kent Beck who said something along the lines of that when you need to introduce a change to your system, change the system so that the change is easy to make. And uh, the parenthesis to that is that changing the system in that way might actually be the difficult part. But, but the point is essentially that you should refactor your system to a point where the change you want to make is easy to make instead of crowbarring the change into the current architecture that you have in your system now. Anyways, so there's always these two sides of, of the story. People like me who perhaps lean to a bit more towards uh, the argument that if you increase abstraction now, you will have a more flexible system so that when you are hit with change requests, it will be cheaper to change your system. And that the cost of uh, introducing these abstractions now aren't actually as severe as people may argue that, that they are. So I'm particularly fond of the idea of pivoting, uh, essentially meaning that we seldomly understand the business value or the actual value of our software before we thoroughly engage with users and sort of evolutionarily realize what the value is and sort of pivot our application towards where the value is. So in order to keep ourselves as flexible as possible, in order to keep ourselves as able as possible to pivot towards where the value seems to be lying, we need to increase abstraction. Right? If we're locking ourselves into a corner where we can change the system, well, it's difficult or it's expensive to change the system to pivot towards where the value seems to be, which means that our competitors will be quicker, potentially, in pivoting towards where, where the value is, and it's difficult for us to maintain our same market share. But that's all stuff discussed in the other videos. Let's get back to this topic. What I want to say in this video is that I came across an argument by Sandy Metz, and I think she puts it in a better way than I'm doing. So the way I understand it, she's more on the pragmatic side of this argument. She's more on the side of saying that it's very, very important that we're not prematurely abstracting because that, es that essentially means that we're gonna incur a lot of cost that actually doesn't give us a lot of benefit later on, and that it's very likely that we anticipate the wrong change. But essentially, she says this, she says that when your requirements are clear, do not introduce abstractions that are not necessary to solve the immediate problem. In other words, when your requirements are clear, solve the immediate problem. Do not anticipate other things. Solve the problem that you have right in front of you. But when your requirements are not clear, you should introduce abstraction. You should increase the level of abstraction so that when your requirements become clearer, it's easier to move towards that. You're not locking yourself, you're not walking into the wrong corner. So how would you know which requirements are clear? She seems to think of it this way. So like, if when you are talking to whoever is uh, giving you the requirements, if that person, if your client, is very specific on some things, it's, it, it's, it's very easy to get specific answers from the clients, then that means that the client have a very good idea of that particular requirement. If the requirement becomes very elucidated, very clear, very, very sharp, right? Then stick to that. But when you ask penetrating questions about a particular feature or about something very specific and the client starts to get vague or starts to deliver conflicting information or anything like this, then you should take that as a warning signal that maybe it's that the client don't actually know where the value lies, what software they want to have built, right? Which is not to blame the client in any way, that's completely natural and again pivoting. It makes sense because we have sort of a hunch about what we want to explore, but it's not, we're not super sure where the value lies. We're not super sure whether we should do it exactly this way or exactly this way, right? But again, <clears throat> whenever you find yourself in those situations, facing those kinds of requirements, then instead of deciding upon one of the very specific explanations that the client gives, 
and then implementing that and then locking yourself into that corner, locking yourself into that room where it's very costly to get out of that particular solution later, you should instead, for sure, lock yourself into one of them, but increase abstraction so that the, uh, the cost of changing the specific solution later on is not super expensive. And perhaps I think it makes more sense to think of it this way. So Sandy Metz seems to argue that you should ask yourself the question, if I'm misunderstanding what they're saying, or if they change their mind about this later, which seems likely because they are giving conflicting information or they're being vague or etc. etc. What would be the cost of changing this later on from a software perspective, right? How expensive would it be to change this later on? If it's not expensive, then you know, never mind. There's no need for that abstraction. There's no need to increase abstraction because the change is gonna be cheap anyway. But if the change is going to be costly, that's when you need to increase abstraction. I think this makes perfect sense and I think you should follow this over what I've been saying about abstraction always equaling pragmatism. So let me revise that. Abstraction is always pragmatism when your requirements are not clear and when it's expensive to change your mind later. Abstraction is pragmatism, but only if you don't know exactly what it is that you're building. If you know exactly what it is that you're building, then maybe you don't need abstraction because you're not actually anticipating change. But as soon as you're anticipating change, and it would be costly to implement that change without abstraction, then introduce abstraction. 